weird how much of a difference that makes. You know why I think it does? Okay, but before we get into all that, I'm trying to decide if I should show you before and after footage of Charlie's guitar first, or go into a deep dive about Mule and the T-Bridge. So here, actually here, what we'll do is, uh, heads will be the before and after footage, and uh, tails will be the, uh, the deep dive. So. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> while we wait for that to come down, um, things have been nuts around here. Basically, I wanna talk about if we should even care about this new T-Bridge. Uh, I wanna show you some side-by-side -side examples of Charlie's old bridge versus the new bridge, and actually a few different saddle materials. And I don't know whether you're a shade tree luthier or you work in a shop. Um, I want to give you some advice of how to install this. If you don't want to spend all day working on this thing like like I did, um, I've got you. I've got you. Oh, sweet. Tails it is. This is a T-bridge. This is the old standard. I mean, this is all we've ever had as far as T-bridges go, this kind of cast aluminum uh, T-bridge. And you can buy these. These are $175. And this one is the new innovation made over at Mule. If they are indeed better, you're getting quite a steal because they're the same price at, a, at $175. So if you want one, too bad. They're actually sold out. Uh, so sorry. So my thoughts, I have some thoughts. Have you heard from Matt though? Have you heard Matt talk about this stuff yet? Because I think you gotta hear it from the source. <laughs> I'm like smiling just looking at it. It's just so beautiful. Pretty. Yeah. So the most important changes you can make to a guitar are around the bridge. That's where the most energy from the strings is being transmitted into the guitar. So making a change to that direct area where the string is powering the guitar makes a huge difference. So we can make better T-bridges. And how we make better T-bridges is out of a machined billet of aluminum. What the billet compared to the casting does is it transfers that energy more efficiently. More of what you put into the guitar, you're getting out of the guitar. It's just nice. It looks like it belongs in Star Wars. Um, I guess this <laughs> does too. The difference is this is hollow. It kind of makes me think of like the hollow bridges that are in those old Gibsons that everybody hates, the plastic ones. That's what this makes me think of. Why, why, why hollow? That doesn't actually seem like a good idea. It seems like it must have been a necessary idea because it's all, all we had. So I definitely see why Matt would want to come up with something that, that wasn't hollow. And that's what this, uh, that's what this billet material can, can afford you. The two basic kinds of aluminum we're, we would talk about is, uh, you got this, this is a cast aluminum and it's an additive. All that means is they add aluminum into a mold and then out comes this. So this is made from a mold. This billet aluminum is uh, the opposite. It's subtractive. They take aluminum in this CNC machine and they just basically subtract material until you come out with the thing you want. I guess you can get a lot more precise using that method. Of course, you need special equipment, but I guess you probably need that for this too. You know, this is definitely lighter like way lighter, but if you look at the strength, the sheer strength, it's a landslide for billet. So why does this matter? I guess I kind of think of it like, you know, with wood, you want a really good dense hard material for your bridge, which is precisely why we experimented with different saddle materials. You know, when Charlie first reached out to me making him this one out of antler, he wanted to upgrade from this uh, torrified maple, which which comes stock from Mule. And so what I went ahead and did is I did make him uh, one out of the, the maple. So then we just know what the stock billet bridge should sound like. And then I also went ahead and made him one out of uh, ebony. Now, there were some trials and tribulations uh, while doing this. Ebony, actually ebony was my first thought. And then I switched my thought to more exotic woods that could not hold up to uh, to the mule. So I, I went back to, to ebony in the end, which I think it's gonna be great. You know, I, I gave him this ebony nut last year and now he has an ebony saddle that he can compare to that. But as far as the material that, that you decide to use, whether it's torrified or ebony or something as crazy as antler, uh, hopefully nothing as dumb as whatever that is. As far as getting it set up, it's actually not that bad. It's kind of, it's kind of what you'd expect, but 
there were a few things that would have been nice to know. So I'll just talk you through this. Yeah, the first thing you'll notice when you, when you get this thing in the mail is you can't just reuse your old saddle because the new saddle slot is uh, way, way thicker. And you also can't just copy the saddle onto like a thicker piece of uh, stock because the height is gonna be different. So if you look at the ones I made, I don't know if you can see that difference in height there. Um, so it has to be a little bit taller. So to get the measurement, um, what I did was put the old uh, bridge back in and then I measured from the bottom of the guitar to the top of the saddle. And then I could translate that measurement onto this new bridge, put the new bridge in, stick a stock piece of wood in there, and then I could take that measurement and translate it over to the new piece of wood. Yeah, you definitely need to make sure these things fit snug as a bug in a rug because the whole reason I made this one was because his original one from Mule was a little bit too loose and vibrating and moving and he actually uh, put a piece of tape on it to solve that which I thought was pretty smart so then I made him this and tape which feels terrible to see and I thought I made it pretty snug but apparently it wasn't good enough so these are so tight. <laughs> this one is actually so tight that I, I almost couldn't get it out. Uh, I was really worried I was maybe gonna snap it in half trying to get it out. Um, and I think that's what you want. You want these things to be very tight because, well, especially if you're a traveling musician, these things get jostled around and Charlie retunes this thing so much that the string tension changes a lot. Um, so that's a mistake I don't mean to make twice. As far as what radius should you use for your saddle, I've actually gotten some pushback from people about the radius of this fingerboard um, because I have described it as as flat as the planes. And apparently people don't think this fingerboard is supposed to be as flat as the planes. It's supposed to have a radius. And um, it's one of those things where it's like, well, uh, I measured it. And so to just kind of end that argument here, so we got this fret rocker, which is uh, precision flat. So if this isn't flat, you know, nothing else is. We will take the strings over, put it on the fingerboard. So that is very flat. And uh, we can also check the frets just in case. And the frets are so flat. If yours has a radius, which is likely it does, uh, you'll just have to figure out what that radius is and translate that to your new saddle. The rest of the setup is, is totally plug and play. You just kind of seat these little feet into the tri-cones. Um, the feet are a little shorter than the old ones. It just makes things a little easier because fishing this thing under there isn't always the funnest job in the world if you have strings on. As far as what I, well, yeah, what do I think? I think I love it. And I just think it's great that he's starting to manufacture stuff like this. Mule, I think, was a necessary, uh, thing in the, in the resophonic world to just have a more artist driven company not that national doesn't have like artists that they stand by and it's just i feel like a company that um we needed to have and the more he grows he can do things like this i'm hoping he can start making his own cones at some point it's just a good guitar this made it great i think that's like the main difference mule has always been like about people it's about using using this like-minded attitude to connect human beings. That's why we make stuff. I'll, I'll get set up and I can show you I can show you the the difference of all three, and I'll show you this one, the original one, which has the uh, antler saddle because I don't have the other one. I don't have the original saddle any longer of that one. And then I will bring out the uh, billet bridge with the stock uh, maple saddle. And then I'll do one more take, and we'll get the uh, we'll get the old ebony ebony saddle in there, and we'll, we'll see once and for all what we think. And then we'll ask Charlie, you know, what he thinks. I'm curious. Maybe he won't like any of them. That would suck.
That's that's perfect. I'm super happy. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to uh, send that a message. I've got you. Got you. Oh. Tails it is.